In our last section, we'll talk about I.O. in Q. Personally, I think this is the coolest feature in Q. But I have to warn you going in, the notation is pretty funky. Just get over that and you'll realize it's very powerful. In fact, once I did this, I could no longer program in any traditional language because the I.O. was just so painful. Before I can actually show you how to do file I.O., I need to describe one more thing that we haven't covered yet. I alluded to this in an earlier session called strings. Now, strings in Q are not exactly what strings are in other languages. But we can ignore that for now. What a string is in Q is a list of character data. So if you have a character like A or J or B, my initials, those are atoms. If you want to make a list of those, the notation is, we'll put them in the proper order, double quote J, A, B, double quote. So if we ask what is the count of that, the answer is three. It is three characters in a list, right? And so if we index into that list, the initial character is J. Contrast that with the symbols, which we saw before, the count of the symbol J, A, B is one because it's an atom. All of those characters are tightly bound in the nucleus, and it's a single entity. But JAB is a list of character data. As such, it is not a primitive data type in Q. It operates as a list, and you have to operate on it as a list of char. Having said that, we can kind of pretend that it's a string. We call it a string. We operate, it, operate on it like it's strings. There are primitives that can do comparisons. Just keep in mind that it's not actually a primitive type. It's a list of char. OK, now we can talk about file I.O. File I.O. in Q is dead simple. You can read or write a file in a single operation. The problem is they have really funky names. So one of the things to consider in Q, there are two types of data as far as Q is concerned in files. There's binary files which are data in just binary form, and actually under the cover, they're hexadecimal characters, right? You have that in other programming languages. And those operations that work on binary data have one in their names, read one and one colon and other things like that. We won't do those here. The other type of data is text data. Text data has zero in the name. So we will see some names with zero in them. So when you see those, you know you're doing, dealing with text files in Q. All right, so here's how Q thinks of a text file. Q says, I have a file that has records of text. Record text, record of text, record of text. In memory, I have an exact correspondence with a list of strings. String, string, string. Record of text, string. Record of text, string. So Q says there's a direct mapping or correspondence between a list of strings on the one hand and a file with records of text on the other hand. Now remember, a list of strings is a list of lists. This is nested lists, and that's a hornet's nest, so we're not going to go there right now. We're just going to pretend that they're just primitive types of strings. All right, so here we go. We're going to create a text file, and we'll create a list of strings. So there's one string. Here's another string. All right, so you're going to ask, what is this parenthesis business? This is how you make a more general list in Q. When you don't have simple lists, as we've seen before, when you don't have a list of homogeneous atoms, as we had in the past, then there's a more general notation, and that's what we're seeing here. It's parentheses with semicolons as separators. So here we have a list that has a string so long, another string and thanks, and the third string for all the fish. So if I ask Q to count this list, 
it will say three because there's three items in that list. All right, there's no simplified notation because it's not simple. All right, so we could take this string, list of strings, and write it out to a text file and create the text file. To do that, we have to use an operator that will do the writing, and we have to tell it the name of the file. The name of the file is a symbol, but it's a kind of funky looking symbol. It would look, in general, like this, backtick colon. So it's a symbol that has a leading colon. This says it's a name of a file. It's a symbol which names a file. And then we'll have a path. And then we'll have a file name. So this is my own machine. So I can write any place I want. So I'm going to write to the path data. And let's call this file so long dot text. All right, so there is the symbol, which in QSpeak is called the symbolic file handle. It's a symbol which gives you a handle on the file. But right now, it's just the name of a file. Now get this. Here is the name of the function in Q that writes text to a file. Yes, indeed, that name is zero colon. Uh, I don't know how hard it would have been to call that write text, but apparently it was too hard. All right, so that will write out a list of strings into a file whose records correspond one to one with these strings. Now, assuming I haven't made my requisite typos. All right, now you'd say, wait a minute, that looks like an error message. In fact, it does, but it's not, because it's a back tick, not a tick. So this is another quirkiness of Q. Error messages are the straight tick, right? File handles are back tick. So it's echoing the file handle back to us, indicating, yes, I successfully wrote the file by that name, all right? Well, how do you know that it did that? Well, we can ask it to read the file back. Do you notice something about this? I didn't have to construct readers and writers and converters of data and all that nonsense. I just said, just write the file. Not only that, I didn't even have to ask it, was the directory there? He created the directory on the fly. Assuming I have permissions to do that, and on my own machine, I do. So suppose I wanted to read that file back. Here is the converse relation function to zero colon, read zero, think zero is text, read text. Oh my goodness, we got a list of strings back. Notice the display of the list because it's not a simple list, he does one item per line. Now, okay, I told you the names are funky. But, you know, if you think about it, zero colon almost kind of makes sense because zero is text and colon is a sign. So you're saying take the thing on the right and assign it as text to the file on the left. I don't know if you buy that, but it's how I remember. All right, so this is reading and writing text files in Q. Can it be any easier? Absolutely not. All right, so here's a pretty cool little, little problem. In a prior job, I was working with someone who was bemoaning the fact that when he was interviewing candidates for Java or Python or whatever, he would give them the following question. In the language of your choice, write a program that reads a text file, catenates it onto the end of itself, and writes that back out. We know enough Q to solve this interview question. First, we know how to read a text file, read zero. Let's read the one that we've already created. Let's assign it to the variable text. Let's catenate that to the end of itself. Remember the join operator we use in Fibonacci. Let's write it back out to the same directory, but let's call it the answer. And remember, write is zero colon. There you go. There's a solution to the interview question in Q. When I showed that to the guy who was bemoaning the problem with getting candidates who could write this program, he immediately said, I have to learn Q. Yes, and so should you.